Hello folks, welcome to the demonstration video number 17 of my eShop project. Today's video is going to be the shortest video of this series because this video is only about the product activation and deactivation process. So without further ado, let's get into this. As you can see, I am currently on my products page. Look at these toggle switches. All of these product listings are currently activated. When sellers are adding new products, our eShop is setting those listings as active as a default. All of these places are currently saying make this product listing inactive. Now let's click on this toggle switch to see what happens. As you can see we are getting an alert as your product is now deactivated. After deactivating our toggle switch look like this. Now this place is saying make this product listing active. Let's activate our listing again. So I'm clicking this toggle switch back. Now we are getting an alert as your product is now activated. Now our toggle switch is looking blue like this again. Now this place is saying make this product listing inactive again. Okay, let's get into coding side of things. So I am going to the VS Code now. As you can see this is my products.php file. This is the input field of our toggle switch. These codes inside of this PHP script are getting the status ID of our product from our database. Status ID 1 means product is active. Status ID 2 means that product is currently deactivated. If status ID is 1 the toggle switch will stay checked. It means toggle switch will look blue. If status ID is 1, this is showing make this product listing inactive. If it is 2, this is showing make this product listing active. Then I am calling a JavaScript function as toggle active state from this toggle switch. Ok, now I am going to our script.js file. You can see our JS function toggle active state like this. Inside of that, we are grabbing our product ID like this. Then I'm creating a new XML HTTP request like this here. This already state changes here to figure out the current state of our request. Then we are sending our request to toggle active state process.php side using the get method from here. We are sending our product ID binded with that request like this. Let's see our toggle active state process.php file now. On top of this PHP script, I am requiring connection.php file to establish the connection with our database. We are grabbing the incoming product ID like this. Then this search query is searching our database for the product with that product ID. After finding that product on our database, these codes are getting the current status ID of it. If it was 1, this query is updating that to 2. After updating like that, this is giving a response as deactivated. If it was 2, this query is updating that to 1. After updating, this is giving a response as activated. If a problem occurred when updating, this is giving a response as something went wrong, please try again later. Now let's go to our script.js file again. If toggle active state process.php side is giving a response text as deactivated, this is giving an alert as your product is now deactivated. If it was activated, this is giving an alert as your product is now activated. In both of those incidents, after giving those alerts, these codes are reloaded in the page. So folks, that's all I have to explain in this video. Stay tuned for the next one. See ya.